What makes Jewish music Jewish? If you want to answer the question, what makes Jewish music, you have to answer the question, what is Jewish? And that's a very serious question. It's a very serious question. And to be sure, what makes something Jewish is a relatively modern question. What I mean when I say that is if you go back 300 years, 400 years, 500 years, and so on, Jewish and religious were synonymous. There's, you know, the Rasag says, Absad Yagon says, Ein umma seinu umma There's no such thing as a Jew without Judaism. They're one and the same. They're inseparable. For much of our history, not for all of our history, but for much of our history, certainly in Galos, a Jew who stopped practicing the mitzvahs was lost immediately. The concept of a Jew who identifies as a Jew and very proudly and very emphatically and very insistently who has nothing to do with Teda and Mitzvahs, who is very compromised Teda and Mitzvahs, is a modern phenomenon. It, it, relatively speaking, it's a modern phenomenon. It's a couple of hundred years old. And you can look at it in two ways. You can look at it as a tragedy. So many assimilated Jews confusing the Jewish identity. But it really, it's an incredible blessing that a Jew who has nothing to do with Judaism still identifies as a Jew. And his child gets a chance to be Jewish. And his grandchild gets a chance to be Jewish. And so on. So, before you answer the question, what is Jewish music, you have to answer the question, what is Jewish? And like I said, for much of our history, Jewish was religious. Jewish was Teireh, Mitzvah, Yireh Shamayim, Avas Hashem, and so on. It's only recently that there's a phenomenon of a secular Jew, which is why you have this question altogether. And I want to tell you a story. In the 80s and the 90s, I, I, I'm not even sure when this happened. But I remember this happening when the Soviet Union was falling apart and opening up. I remember Barry Farber used to say, when the Iron Curtain turned into Venetian blonde, he was a southerner, when the Iron Curtain turned into Venetian blonde. So there were a lot of inter-Russia uh, and America events. There was a a radio program which would be featured with a regularity that had an American and a Russian. The American was Phil Donahue and the Russian was the voice of Radio Moscow. His name was Vladimir Posner. Vladimir Posner is probably still alive, is officially Jewish. I, I've been told he's not Jewish, but his name is Posner. His father is certainly a Jew. Vladimir Posner is American born. And him and his father and his mother went back to the Promised Land in the 1950s, when, of course, the Soviet Union was a utopia. And he worked for the Russians. He, he spoke English well. He was American-born. So he was the voice of Radio Moscow that was the propaganda wing of Russia to the West for many, many, many years. I heard an interview recently where he explained that a lot of the things he was saying at that time, he didn't really believe he had no choice but to say them because of censorship. But they would have these conversations that people would call in. It was very interesting. You may recall a radio broadcast that involved George Bush, the father, Mikhail Gorbachev, and um, the head of the, the president of the Russian Federation, whose name escapes me. He's the one who was the first president of the dissolved Russia, Boris Yeltsin. Anyway, the question of what a Jew is came up. So Mr. Posner says, a Jew is not a religion. I'm Jewish, I'm not religious. A Jew is not a race. There are black Jews, there are white Jews, there are yellow Jews, there are so on. A Jew is not a culture. There's Sephardic Jews, Ashkenazi Jews. He went through every social norm, every social system of discrimination and division. And he said a Jew can't be a culture, it can't be a religion, it can't be a race, it can't be a way of life, because there's Jews that don't conform to any of those patterns. And he finished by saying, I don't know what the meaning of the word Jew is. He couldn't identify it. I remember literally, I was screaming at my radio, saying, thank you, Mr. Posner, because he identified what a Jew is. A Jew is none of the above. A Jew is a pentelayit, as an neshama. As long as a Jew has an neshama, if he doesn't practice the religion, he's Jewish. Doesn't belong to the culture, he's Jewish. Doesn't belong to the race, he's Jewish. 
but it has to have a pinta. It has to be Jewish. A pinta. In other words, Judaism is a religion, but Judaism is also a nationality. It's a combination of a way of life and a self-identity. And the argument is, like the Rebbe always says it, that if you are a member of this people, your nature is to live this way. And as hard as you try to go away from Torah and Mitzvah, it's against your nature to abandon it, and you will eventually, you, your children, your grandchildren, come back to it. So being Jewish is not what you do, it's who you are. And because of who you are, it's inevitable that sooner or later you will live as a Jew is supposed to live because Einu Maseinu Uma Elabateirasa. There can be not, no such thing as a Jew without Judaism. So when you ask the question, what is Jewish music? And of course, I understand that the question is being asked. The question is being asked is who decides when music tips off from Jewish to not Jewish? The true answer to that question is that everything Jewish is religious. There's no such thing as Judaism. It's not religious. I know that's a very narrow answer, and it's a very, very um, conservative answer, almost mean and angry answer. But I think this is the truth. You should know that our Rabbeim, the Rebbe Rashab, the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe, believed that there's nothing Jewish that's not religious. And I'm going to bring something very sensitive up. There are the Rebbe Rashab was one of the founders of the Agudas Yisrael, which is the largest body of representing Orthodox Jews, Haredi Jews. And the Rebbe Rashab left the Agudas Yisrael, as did Chaim Rizkir. And the way I understand the reason for their departure was because they believed the Jewish leadership has to be only G'dayli Yisrael, only rabbis, not lay people. Not lay leaders. There's no such thing as leadership within the Jewish world. That's not religious. There's nothing in the Jewish world separate from the Jewish religion. And the moment they wanted to introduce the concept of clergy and lay leaders, they said, not for us. So the real answer to the question is, what is Jewish music is if it's Jewish. And Jewish means it's connected to our relation with the Kaddish Baruch which means it's either music which comes from the religion or it's music that brings us closer to the religion. But you know and I know that's not what you meant when you asked the question. <laughs> you wanted to know h- how crazy music I can listen to and still be considered listening to Jewish music. It's a very different question. But it's not really a question of what's Jewish music. It's a question of what music is permitted for a Jew. And we'll leave it for another time. Mm-hmm.